Hello and welcome to Piano Shack with me, Woody, on a very exciting day. I'll tell you why in just a second. But this is the brand new Yamaha Mo DX. I don't quite get the name, but what I do know is that this is the successor to my Mo XF, and it's the trickle down of the very best technology from the flagship Yamaha Montage. Yes, it was just a matter of time before we saw the Montage technology and sound engine in a more affordable instrument. Sorry to interrupt the broadcast, but I've just realized why this is called the Mo DX. And it's so obvious, I feel like a bit of an idiot. But it's because this is the marriage of the Motif technology with the FM synthesis used in the DX range of synthesizers in the 80s. Yes, I of all people should know. Even the font actually looks like the DX font on my DX7. So I kind of wish I'd gone for the Mo DX7 model with the more keys, just so that I could really say that we actually have a DX7 back in the shack again. The other point I wanted to interrupt you for is to say why this video is especially exciting for the channel and for me. Well, the thing is that this synthesizer hasn't been released yet. In fact, it hasn't even been announced. The launch event is in a couple of days in New York City, but Yamaha offered to send me one of these ahead of time so that I could check it out, make some videos, and share it with you when this synth is launched. So this is a first for the channel, which makes it exciting in itself, but it's also a really proud moment for me to be doing this kind of collaboration. Okay, I'm gonna play you the intro bumper now, and then we'll go back to the other guy. Sorry again for interrupting. The goal of today's video then is to do a leisurely unboxing of this synthesizer together whilst we talk about the highlight features. It's a very capable instrument with a lot of new features so we can't talk about them all today in depth but we'll highlight some of the most interesting ones for you anyway and also we'll talk about the differences between this and my old Mo XF, the Motif and even the flagship model, the Montage. This is a special day and an interesting synthesizer, so let's take our time and really enjoy the moment. One thing that I do know is that this synth has the same FMX sound engine as the Montage, and that means that it can load DX7 presets. So what we'll definitely be doing in the future is re-enjoying those 32 factory presets from the DX7 on a new hardware synthesizer, perhaps using some of the effects processing of this new workstation. But let's not jump the gun. Today we'll just do an unboxing. I'll take you on a quick tour of the user interface. We'll talk about some of the features, highlights, and then I'll play you, of course, some of the sounds. Normally then, I do like to read for you the highlight features that are on the box, but in this particular case, it's a rather boring gray box. So let's just open it up. Perhaps there is a box within the box. Did a terrible job of that. Let's try attacking it from the sides first. I don't want to damage whatever is beneath the lid. There we go. Okay, no box within a box. There is the keyboard down below. So there's your product manuals there, as you can see, which I will be reading. None of this information is published online yet at the time I'm making this video anyway. What else do we have? Over in this corner, I can see the power supply. Yes, this doesn't have a built-in power supply. You'll probably need to go for the Genos, not the Genos, the Montage if you want that. I'm mixing up the models here. That's fairly typical for synthesizers in this price class. Yeah, this is a mid-range synthesizer, by the way, in case you're wondering. I don't know what the actual price will be, but maybe it'll be comparable with the Mo XF, which was about a thousand dollars, a thousand euros, 10,000 kroners. But we've yet to see this one maybe more expensive because it's got a lot more features than the Mo XF had. 
Okay, let's pull this one out. Do you want to come and help? Let's see. If we can just lift it out and put it on the table. You have to lift this out from inside. There we go. Oh, it's not very, not very heavy, is it? Put that one over there. Put that one down there. Thanks very much. Do you want to see it? Uh, no. No? Okay. A bit camera shy. You're going to come back when I turn it on, Eddie? Yeah. Okay. So there you go. Let's get this plastic off so we can have a good look. And I was surprised when I lifted out the box how light this thing is. Much lighter than the MoXF and a lot more compact as well. But there we go, a handsome thing. I always say that about my keyboards, I know. Look at that. Wow. Okay, the keys are nicer than my MoXF. That feels like an upgrade to me. What's really good, I'm doing the test here. I hate it when the keys are hinged very, very close to the top of the keys. It makes it difficult to play up here. These ones aren't too bad, not too bad at all. Very nice feel and quite quiet as well. Thumbs up for the keys. The overall feeling of the fit and finish, you people know that I'm a bit picky about that. Feels good, there's no flex. This is a solid looking and feeling keyboard even though it is completely plastic. There's the underneath if you're curious with some of these struts and girders and things for rigidity. Yeah, handsome looking beast. Super knob up there, some sliders, didn't have that on the MoXF. Pitch and mod wheels up here. I'll tell you what, we'll go over to the PC right now, take a look at the features and the some of the specifications, some of the key ones anyway. I'm not gonna bore you, we'll look at them very briefly and I'll give you my commentary on some of the standout highlight new features. Then we'll come back here, power it on, I'll give you a quick tour of the user interface, and then of course at the end I'll play you a couple of song, songs and sounds. I wouldn't let you go without doing that. This document is pretty cool. It's what Yamaha send out to their demo guys, the reviewers, and the retailers, so you can quickly get up to speed with the features of the new instrument. It's all I have right now to work with because there is nothing published online yet as we are recording this ahead of the official launch. I got permission to share this with you as it's a good way to present some of the highlight features. That's why we have these little grey boxes with tips on how to demonstrate the features. The sound then, this is the same engines as the montage. There are two of them, the AWM2, which is the traditional sample plus synthesis, plus a new recreation of FM synthesis called FMX. It is derived from the DX7, but now we have an eight operator FM architecture, 64 note polyphony, plus filters and more. 192 notes total polyphony. There was some speculation about this online ahead of the launch as some misleading information, or wrong information was leaked, but 192, which sounds like plenty enough. We have at last integrated flash memory, so there's no need to buy these very expensive $300 flash expansion boards anymore. Thank you, Yamaha. The effects have always been great on these synths, but it seems like we have some new ones now, such as Beat Repeat Vinyl Break, Bit Crusher, and a compressor with side chain for a modern ducking effect, plus some retro vintage effects like Analog Delay, VCM Phaser, and Amp Simulations. We had those in the previous model, but perhaps they've been enhanced here. The AD input I don't think is anything new. We had those in the previous models. You can run an external source, a guitar, vocals, or synth into the instrument and then use the effects of the Modi X. Compatibility with Montage and Motif DX and TX. Excellent. It's compatible with the Montage libraries, the Motif as well. There are hundreds of third-party Motif libraries available. And this is great news. You can use a free FM converter web app to convert DX7, TX patches, etc. We'll have to try that out. I hope it can do them in bulk for an entire bank, otherwise it's going to be a bit tedious. But we'll have to check that out in the future. There is a Bosendorfer Imperial Premium Grand Sample Library download for free to all Modix owners. Although I think I saw something 
that it was only available to the Modi X7 and 8, but we'll have to check that out. Perhaps we'll see that later in this document. Multi-channel USB audio interface. This is a big deal for me because for the first time in any synth that I've owned, we have a two in 10 out multi-channel USB audio interface. Typically it's two in two out, which means you have to do all of the mixing. If you have a multi-track performance, you have to do all the mixing within the synthesizer and then record it to your DAW as a stereo pair. But here we have 10 out, meaning that you can send five stereo pairs to your DAW in parallel and record multiple tracks and then use your DAW to do whatever processing you like on those tracks. It's much more flexible. The Super Knob allows a simultaneous control of up to 128 parameters in a single performance. So by twisting that one knob, you can control many different parameters at the same time. Not completely new. We've had this on other synthesizers in the past. My old Nord Lead 2 had it 20 years ago. But this one flashes. The rhythm pattern feature is something new. Likewise, the motion sequencer and the envelope follower. This is interesting, auto beat sync. The Modi X synthesizer listens to the music and plays along in time. It automatically synchronizes itself with whatever you have coming into the AD input. That's very interesting. Also, there's been some misleading information about the weight of the 88 note version of this synth. I can see here in this information brochure, the weight of the Mo DX8 comes in at just 13.8 kilograms. That's pretty light. The one I have is 6.6 .6 and the 73 note version is 7.4 kilos. Very, very light. Here are some of the key specifications then. I'm going to mention a couple of them to you. The waveform ROM is expanded from 741 megabytes to 5.67 gigabytes. That's amazing. Not quite a factor of 10 larger, but getting on up there. And that's huge for any keyboard instrument. Six gigabyte sample library on board. That's comprised of over 6,000 waveforms, 2,000 of them are new. Seamless sound switching is something I've noticed when you change presets whilst holding down a key, it doesn't glitch. The previous preset continues to play. That's really nice. 10,000 arpeggios and eight arpeggio parts simultaneously. That's double the number of parts that we had before. Eight scenes per performance. Not sure what that is. We'll have to investigate. Here's the basic knowledge section that describes the user interface. The motion control seems to be an important new feature. This is something we'll have to dive into in a separate video, I think. It's quite complicated. Bit of information here on the FMX, which some of you will find interesting. The main enhancements over the DX7 are eight operators. DX7 had six, 88 algorithms. DX7 had 32 and seven spectral forms. The DX7 only allowed you to use a sine wave and a bunch of other stuff that I don't really understand. But for sure, with this big touchscreen interface, it's going to be a lot easier to program this synthesizer than the previous generations of FM synths. It's very surprising to me that the sequencer is still being included in the Modi X that was removed in the montage. And here are the three models that are, and here are the three models that are available. The Mo DX7 I just read is 76 keys, not 73. So ignore anything I might say incorrectly in the rest of this video. And here are some tips for the demonstrators how to best show off these features. So I'll be making use of this later. Here's a picture of the montage then, the montage six in this case. And I find myself feeling quite surprised and impressed how much of the montage technology has trickled down to the cheaper version of the synthesizer. It makes me wonder a little bit why you would go for the montage, which is over twice the price. I'm just looking at the screenshot here. I can see there are many more buttons, sliders and knobs. So that's one reason. And the keyboard is much higher end on this model as well. And presumably the build quality is much more sturdy as well. This is an instrument that's built for pros, built for the road. But even so, it's so great to see so much of the technology available now in a more budget friendly option. And check this out. I wanted to share with you this image showing the lineup of FM synthesizers from Yamaha. Now this is a nice bit of kit. I like the feeling on the keys here. They've got a 
slightly textured matte feel to them, at least on the black keys. The white keys are perfectly glossy. Black ones are good. This is, I didn't mention, this is the Mo DX6 with a five octave 61 note keyboard. They've also released an eight, as they usually do, with the fully weighted keys, regular piano size keyboard, 88 keys, but also, which is new for this series of synths, a seven with a 73 note keyboard range, either 73 or 76, I'm not sure, I think it's 73, but that's the first and that's really good because a lot of guys think that this is a bit too cramped and they think the 88 notes are a bit too much, a bit too heavy, so it's great to have an option in the mid-range there. Do you want to quickly review the inputs and outputs before we fire this up? Okay, you've got your AD inputs, this thing has a stereo pair of inputs, that's nice. Power switch there, go over to the left, phones, output, output, left, right. Two foot controller switches. Two more, so four in total, that's pretty good. Proper MIDI in and out over there. Over here we have USB 2 device, I think that's where you can plug in a USB memory stick. And over there is our USB to host, where you can plug it into the computer to send audio over USB and MIDI over USB. Okay, I'm ready to fire this up for the first time. Shall we focus on the screen? I guess. Have everything a bit like that. Let's go for it. Super knob lighting up. And there comes the screen. I'm not sure if this is the exact same screen as we have on the montage. But it's certainly nice to see such a great screen to be on the budget version of that instrument. Much, much better than we had on the Mo XF, that's for sure. So the machine has come to life. There it is with the pulsing super knob as well. As we come to love from the montage, I've teased that a little bit, both for the name and the appearance of it. But let's... Uh, in a future video, see what it really can do. It's a kind of morph function, I think. I'm talking about this thing here, by the way, guys, if you're wondering what the super knob is. That's descended directly from the montage end. That was not available in the previous Mo models. Very nice crisp screen, I have to say. This is a touch screen as well. CFX, that's the grand piano, plus FMEP2 is the sound we have selected right now. I don't know. There we go, here we can step through the different sounds in this bank, all on the touch screen. It's making a little beeping noise as I change the sounds. Rather nice. I tell you what, I'm gonna give you a quick tour of the user interface, the front panel here, from left to right. And somebody's knocking on the door, just a second. I'm curious what this little info sticker says over here. Let's take a look. Main features, perform using live automation of AWM2 plus FMX synthesized engines. Connect to soundmondo.com, social sound sharing online community. Interesting. Expand with huge montage, motif and DX7 libraries. Cool, so it is compatible, backwards compatible with the previous Mo models. Live sets, explore the Modiex internal recommended performances. We'll do that later. Category, search for performances. And audition. Here each performance is an audition button, okay. If you want more info, scan in that little 2D code. Okay, starting from the left, let's give you guys a quick tour of the control panel, guys and girls. Let's do this correctly. Starting from the left here, shall I zoom out a little bit? There we go. Let's start over on the left. Now, this is controversial, but I like it. The pitch and mod wheels here, that feel pretty nice by the way, have been relocated from the left of the keyboard here. On the original Yamaha Mo XF, there was a panel here to the left of the keyboard. They've been moved up there, which makes it much more compact, this huge amount of wasted space there which maybe doesn't matter if you're gigging, but if you've got it in a tight studio or on your desk, it's nice to see them up there, I think. And for me, it doesn't affect the playability whatsoever. We then have, it looks like, the master volume up here and the USB volume coming in from your computer. This is a bit of a downgrade from the MoXF, which had two faders and a lovely LED VU meter as well. 
There's the gain for the AD input as well. Here we have some assignable buttons. I recognize those from the Moex F. The motion sequencer, new for this instrument. Triggers, the ARPs on and off. Nice backlit buttons. They feel nice to press. The octave up and down is there. Let's move over to this section. Okay, this looks familiar. This is the editing controller matrix. You can, for example, select different rows here and then adjust the cutoff or the resonance pan with these knobs. And by choosing different lines in the matrix, you can adjust different features. This is a really quick way to edit the sounds. I never really do much deeper editing than using these front panel controls. Nice to see them. This is new. We didn't have any sliders or faders on the old MoXF. The Montage, I think, has more, and the Motif series had eight of these, at least on the later Motifs. But these feel kind of nice, and I can see also that you can assign these to different tracks as well. So although there are only four, you can control more things than just four. And I guess you use these typically for perhaps draw bars on an organ preset, or your faders when you're mixing your song to adjust the levels of the different tracks. These buttons here are also assignable from one to four, five to eight. I guess you can use these to start and stop. Ah, different scenes. Okay, we need to figure out what a scene is because that's a new concept for me. We didn't have this in the previous generation. Over here then we have the super knob pulsing in all its glory. I can twist this and you can see it's got an LED ring going around the edge like the old Nordlead 3s, I think it was, that had those. Very nice, and it pulses in time with the tempo or the LFOs, whatever it's flashing in time to. Don't, oh, now it's orange, cool. Yeah, okay, so it's a, a color changing LED. And actually, as I'm turning it here, I can see the colors changing from blue to green to orange, rather nice. This, this feels ever so nice to the touch, please. please. No knob jokes, okay? Here are the sequencer controls. It's amazing to me that this has a built-in sequencer since the flagship model doesn't. But here are the controls for that anyway. Rhythm pattern selects, control assign buttons down there as well. Oh, and as I press these now, we get a sequencer display here on the screen, which looks rather nice. Let's press the performance button. Wow. Okay, I'm gonna give you a close-up on the screen now. I have no idea what I'm doing right now. I haven't even read the manual, obviously. This is my first initial unboxing. But I can show you what some of these screens look like. Okay, maybe that's a good angle there. And I'm just gonna press some of the buttons here on the front panel, and we'll see what we get. So this seems to be perhaps the arpeggio page for the performance, and this is maybe the mixer page. I don't know how we get back to the, oh, there we go. Live set takes me back to this sound browser. I suppose that's what this is. Utility takes us into the various menus, performance, home. Let's jump back into the sequencer so you can see that by pressing play. We jump into the sequencer page. Okay, that'll do for now. We'll dig into all of these features in the future videos. I just thought I should mention here after using the screen for a little bit, that it is not a hard glass screen like you get on an iPad or a high-end smartphone. It's actually made of plastic and you have to tap it to register an input. And as far as I can tell, it doesn't support multi-touch or gestures like pinch to zoom or swipe or anything like that. Finally then, we have the right-hand side and this is very stripped down compared to the Motive, the Montage, and all the other previous Mo models. They had a lot of extra buttons here for selecting banks, sounds, categories, and even controlling the behavior of the arpeggios in real time. And I use those buttons a lot during my live arpeggio performances. So I'm a little bit wary, a little bit troubled that they've gone now, because I do prefer using myself physical buttons with some tactile response than pressing a touch screen, but we'll just have to test that out and see how it works out. But here we have your usual cursor buttons then for navigating. There we go, must be these four, up and down, yeah. 
not sure. Yeah, you can see that on the screen, maybe. You can navigate around the screen, the different areas there, and here your ink decrement. Let's go back here, live set. Looking in here, yeah, okay, interesting. Here is where your traditional encoder dial, where you can go rapidly up and down through the different values or presets. Very nice. Increment, decrement there as well to go up one at a time. Exit, enter over there. Here are the different mode buttons then. And I'm gonna to need to read the manual before I can explain these to you in depth. So we'll do that in a separate video for sure. Performance mode is there, live set, the category, a category browser, okay. Piano, for example. All the various pianos are coming up there on the screen. It's quite an itsy bitsy little font. I can just about make out what we're doing. There's the utility menu, edit page. Yeah, these are your preset management buttons, I suppose. Part select, mute solo, and the audition, which will play you probably a little phrase of whatever preset you've got selected at the time. So there you go. That's a very quick whistle stop tour of the user interface from somebody that doesn't really know what they're talking about yet. But we're going to invest a lot of time in this through the autumn. I hope to demonstrate all, if not most of these features for you in the upcoming videos. Okay, we are nearing the end of this video now. But this is just the beginning, this is the start of a journey. And as I learn the new features of this synthesizer, then I'll share them with you on the channel. So now would be a good time to subscribe if you haven't already done so. Thank you very much if you have. If you think this is an interesting topic, there's plenty more to come. And also I'll be doing some live streams on Twitch where we do some more informal browsing of the presets, the capabilities, and the sounds of this instrument. I'm not planning to do a review, at least not initially. I'd much prefer to wait a few months until I've learned this thing inside out, and then I can perhaps share you some top 10 pros and cons. But I have to say, my initial impressions are very positive and above my expectations. You've seen the features now, very impressive, as are the specifications. And I have to say, the fit, finish, build quality, the keyboard, the screen, the controls, everything is above my expectations, so we're off to a very good start. Let's head off then to the other room, and I'll hook this up to my PC and my DAW, and I'll record me playing some of the performance presets, so you can get an idea what it sounds like. Maybe we can find some of these FMX sound engine sounds for me to demonstrate for you. So, that's all for today. Uh, stay tuned, because I'll put the playing clip in after I say cheerio.
You know, I really wanted to play for you some of these trademark motif multi arpeggio performances. You know, the ones where you can hold down a couple of keys and the instrument plays itself. It's a lot of fun. But for some strange reason, Yamaha have hidden those away and I couldn't find them with the category browser. So what we did just now was played some of the performances from the live set that loads up when you boot up the keyboard. It's called the best of Mo DX. So that seemed like a good place to start. And bear in mind, I've only owned this keyboard and used it for literally a couple of hours now. So I've only scratched the surface. I've got a lot to learn, but that's something we can do together in the coming months. I'll learn this instrument step by step, feature by feature, and share it with you on the channel. So now is a good time to write a comment if you have any questions or a particular feature that you want me to demonstrate. and I'll take that into consideration. Okay, that really does wrap up this video. Thanks again, as always, for watching. I'll see you again soon. Cheerio. Mm -hmm.